Hi, welcome to the part three of this video series. We are looking at AWS Solution Architect Professional Real Certification Questions. Please refer the previous parts for previous questions. Needless to say, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. It takes a lot of effort to produce these contents. Let us jump into the questions. So before we cover the questions, we will cover questions related to these three topics. We will look at what is concurrency scaling in Redshift clusters. We will look at some of the concepts around customer gateway. And then we will look at how Athena can be used for curing data. See, there is a Redshift database. And these orange ones are the reserved nodes. What is this database used for? It is used for reporting. So this database from here, reports will be generated. Now, what is the problem? Problem is they expect or uh, they are seeing unexpected burst of consumption. For example, they thought that say 50 reports will run. Suddenly sometime 100 reports run or so many users log in at the same time run the reports. So that is unexpected. Now you need to give a solution which can tolerate these consumption bursts. At the same time, it has to be cost effective. Everything should be cost effective. See, if you scan through these four options, no, you can see two options are stupid options, like using Lambda, these two. Nobody uses Lambda to add capacity to the Redshift cluster. So these are totally wrong. Lambda, you know why you cannot use? Any understanding why you cannot use this? Because it times out in 15 minutes. That's a max. This is a max here if you are trying to increase the capacity redshift you definitely need processing more than 15 minutes because a huge amount of data will be processed here why i'm saying so because it clearly says they these are complicated read queries which are cpu heavy so lambda will not work we have established that a says that you provision additional amr amr clusters and you offload the data processing tasks to that so that these four clusters will only do uh, read queries to support reports and for write you just have one cluster this is scrap solution what if there is an unexpected burst of writes instead of reads what will you do so a will not work that leaves us with d which is our answer why because concurrency scaling feature you can support unlimited i repeat unlimited concurrent users and concurrent queries which consistently delivers fast query performance unlimited is helpful because you see here you are receiving unexpected bursts so if you have unlimited capacity scaling then it will take care the system will not be slow it will not go down and your queries will run fast because we saw here the query performance is fast so this is the final answer so when you use concurrency scaling, you see here there were four nodes and say one cluster. If the load increases now, it will automatically add this new cluster. It's like if one team lead had four developers and they were able to take eight tasks. Now if the tasks become 12, then you add one more team lead with the nodes, whatever. And users will the users see different data because we are using two clusters no they will see the same data whether the main cluster that is this one if the main cluster processes it i will change the color that is this one if the main cluster processes it or if the concurrency scaling cluster processes it so am i making this up no you can read this line and this will be evident no, you might come and say, Cloud Guru, is this cost effective? Yes, it is cost effective. Why? Because you see this, right? You will be charged for the concurrency clusters only for actively running queries. Otherwise, you will not be charged. That means, like I gave an example, if you have 12 work, 12 tasks, then this guy here will do eight tasks and four will be done by this. The moment this guy does four, you will not be charged for this. And hence, it is most cost effective. I hope you understand the concept behind this answer. 
now let's look at this one see you had one VPN connection now you add one more so this becomes duplicate now how can you guarantee that this works properly now it is uh, important to understand what is a virtual gateway and customer gateway so whenever suppose you are on premises this is your on-prem box and this is your AWS cloud box so if you want to establish connection from on-prem to AWS you will have to create a VPN connection so usually what happens is here on on-prem we put customer gateways and on AWS side we have virtual gateways so this is your customer gateway and this arrow here is your this is your virtual gateway now if you add one more VPN connection then you will need one more customer gateway and you will add a VPN connection here now how we can guarantee that uh, this is utilized properly and works so the first option it suggests that you should use uh, make the connection publicly accessible so this looks correct because uh, whenever people will have to connect from on-prem to cloud that is from this place to this place if you have to connect then the second VPN connection must be publicly accessible and hence you will make this IP this customer gateway IP publicly accessible so this looks correct second one B says that the virtual gateway IP address you have to make that publicly accessible that means here so that need not be publicly accessible you have to make this publicly accessible so that because your connection will happen from on-prem to cloud from this on-prem to this cloud and hence B is wrong C talks about using dynamic routes here dynamic routes will not be helpful it is something which is a feature of some other service this is not helpful and D it says that you will keep this connection privately accessible if you're keeping this connection privately accessible probably you will not be uh, able to guarantee that this works properly so this is my final answer let's look at the next one so this scenario is a very easy scenario you have an EC2 instance so this is your EC2 instance and you have put a Hadoop cluster here this is a Hadoop cluster usually you know what in the AWS world we use AWS EA MR because this is the place where you can use all of your big data processing using Apache Spark, Hive, Presto and so on. So all of these are big data technologies. But what did our question do? They have put an EC2 instance here. They have put this instance and they are deploying Hadoop cluster here. Now they these guys have 100 terabytes of data. Humongous data. 100 terabytes is a big amount of data. And what did it do for this? It is used for weekly operating reports. Remember, these are not C suit reports. If these are C suit reports, then the data volume access will be smaller because it will access aggregated data. Since these are operating reports, that means the data volume might be bigger. And this allows data scientists to access the cluster on a need basis. Need basis. Okay. So as usual, you have to reduce your expense and operational complexity, and you have to uh, you know do this cheaply because you're a cheap person. <laughs> your company doesn't have money. So it's always, you know, why do we see you want to do it cheaply? Because there is a perception. People think if you come on AWS or Azure or, or any cloud platform, you will end up, you will end up paying a lot of money. And hence, you will see that most of the questions, it will always talk about cost because they want you through this certification process to be very much aware that cost can be decreased. There is a process, there is a design mechanism, and as a solution architect, you are responsible for reducing the cost. That's why both solution architect associate and solution architect professional, you will see it will mostly quiz you around cheap solutions. Now, let's scan through the options. The first one says you move the Hadoop cluster from EC2 into EMR. Okay. 
and that is what we saw here emr is the best choice but emr is like mercedes benz it is very expensive since we are looking for a cheap solution a cheap solution this will not suffice now let's look at b we have already striked out a b says you write a script and you will resize make the instance small big whenever you think that the reports are getting created okay how do you know that you cannot schedule this right this is on demand the people will access the, the data scientists will access it on need basis how will you do that second resizing or making this easy to small will only solve the compute issue the cost of compute but storage you are already spending you know, 100 terabytes you have to store you cannot do much about that you cannot go with a smaller instance uh, beyond a limit because you already have this need of high storage hence b is wrong let's look at c c looks apt because what it is saying is it is saying change the solution itself man use a different service cheaper service so what are those services s3 dead cheap athena dead cheap does it help with reporting it is born to create reports and use with reports it is born to facilitate reports remember report creation will happen in quick sight but this solution will allow you to achieve the same thing with smaller costs because the root cost now you might say hey boss we are asking to replace a big data solution with s3 and athena does it suffice yes boss it suffices why because the question doesn't say to replace the writes and the data processing of hadoop clusters it is telling you about reports reports hence for reports this solution would work we are not replace we are not saying that you replace the entire cluster and entire processing and move it on athena no it is the question is specific to reports that's why we are specifically giving the report solution d it says migrate the data to DynamoDB and modify the reports. See, DynamoDB is a NoSQL database. From a reporting standpoint, we always base, because reporting is what? SQL based application. Reporting requires SQL queries. DynamoDB, you cannot fire SQL queries because DynamoDB is a NoSQL database. Hence, this solution will not fit. Moreover, if you see the business applications of DynamoDB, it says you create media metadata stores. Okay. you use it for gaming platforms to scale the gaming platforms and so on reporting is not even uh, i mean it is not designed for reporting and hence d is wrong in this case this is my final answer please do not forget to hit the subscribe and the like button it takes a lot of effort to bring these contents to you with detailed analysis and every effort every effort is made to make this content as close to accuracy as possible this brings us to the end of part three. We covered questions related to these three topics. Let me summarize. This is one we discussed. This is the next one we discussed. And then this is the last one we discussed. Stay tuned for more such informative content. I will see you in the next part. Ciao.